You all set? All right. This morning, I've been engaged with my team as we began the first difficult days of implementing this deal. It's only a start, but so far it's gone well. Earlier this morning, 13 Israeli hostages were released, including an elderly woman, a grandmother, and mothers with their young children, some under the age of six years old. Separately, several Thai nationals and Filipino nationals were also kidnapped by Hamas on the 7th. They were released as well. All of these hostages have been through a terrible ordeal, and this is the beginning of a long journey of healing for them. But in the next hour or so, we'll know what the second wave of releases are, and I'm hopeful that is, is as, well, as we anticipate. Today has been a product of a lot of hard work and weeks of personal engagement. From the moment Hamas kidnapped these people, I, along with my team, have worked around the clock to secure their release. We saw the first results of this effort with the release of two American hostages in late October, followed by the release of two Israeli hostages. I've consistently pressed for a pause in the fighting for two reasons, to accelerate and expand humanitarian assistance going into Gaza, and two, to facilitate the release of hostages. And over the past several weeks, I've spoken repeatedly with the Emir of Qatar, the President of Sisi of Egypt, and Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel to help secure this deal, to nail it down. And I want to thank all three leaders for their personal partnership to get this done. Over the next few days, we expect that dozens of hostages will be returned to their families. We also remember all those who are still being held and renew our commitment to work for their release as well. Two American women and one four-year-old child, Abigail, who remains among those missing. We also will not stop until we get these hostages brought home and an answer to their whereabouts. I remain in personal contact with the leaders of Qatar, Egypt, and Israel to make sure this stays on track and every aspect of the deal is implemented. You know, uh, this extended pause in the fighting brings a critical opportunity to deliver much-needed food, medicine, water, and fuel to the civilians in Gaza, and we are not wasting one single minute. Since my trip to Israel last month, I've been focused on accelerating the delivery of humanitarian assistance to Gaza in coordination with the United Nations and the Red Cross. More than 200 trucks arrived at the crossing point in Egypt into Gaza today. These trucks carry food and medicine, as well as fuel, fuel and cooking gas. The fuel will be used not only to power the trucks delivering these life-saving supplies, but to, for desalinization, for water wells, for hospitals, and for bakeries and hundreds more trucks are getting in position as well, ready to enter Gaza over the coming days to support the innocent Palestinians who are suffering greatly because of this war that Hamas has unleashed. Hamas doesn't give a damn about them. We also look to the future. As we look to the future, we have to end this cycle of violence in the Middle East. We need to renew our resolve to pursue this two-state solution where Israelis and Palestinians can one day live side by side in a two-state solution. I'll remain engaged with leaders throughout the Middle East as we all work together to build a better future for the region. A future where this kind of violence is unthinkable. A future where all children in the region, every child, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Israeli, Palestinian, Arab, grow up knowing only peace. I've encouraged the Prime Minister to uh, to focus on trying to reduce the number of casualties while he is attempting to eliminate Hamas, which is a legitimate objective he has. That's a difficult task, and uh, I don't know how long it will take. My expectation and hope is that as we move forward, the rest of the Arab world and the region is also putting pressure on all sides to slow this down, to bring this to an end. I think the chances are real. Mr. President, do you trust Hamas to uphold their identity? I don't trust Hamas to do anything right. I only trust Hamas to respond to pressure. Mr. President, you said you were hoping to get. I cannot prove what I'm about to say. But I believe one of the reasons why Hamas struck when they did was they knew that I was working very closely with the Saudis and others in the region 
to bring peace to the region by having recognition of Israel and Israel's right to exist.